In this experiment, we're going to determine the purity of an aspirin sample by carrying out a back titration. Now, in the instructions that uh, you'll be following, initially it asks you to do a control sample where you're analysing a sample of pure aspirin in order to validate your method. Now, unfortunately, we don't actually have any pure aspirin, so we're just going to, in this experiment, jump straight to the determination of aspirin in the commercial aspirin tablet. So I get a large uh, conical flask, put it on the balance and tear it. Now I want to add some aspirin tablets till I have approximately 1.5 grams. So one tablet is about 0.6. Two tablets settling at 1.21 grams. So two or three tablets. Uh, I think I'll just stick. You want to stick with a whole number of tablets. So I'll go with two tablets at 1.21 grams. Right, Tom. Right, I've now carefully measured out 25 mils of the 1 mole of sodium hydroxide having previously washed out a pipette with a small sample of the sodium hydroxide. So I now add the sodium hydroxide to the aspirin. Followed by 25 cubic centimetres approximately of deionised water. And then we're going to put that on a hot plate and we'll just let that simmer gently for about 30 minutes. So this is the structural formula of aspirin and what's happening when on the hot plate just now when we've added sodium hydroxide to it, is that the sodium hydroxide will hydrolyze the ester link. So the aspirin will be split there. And the initial products would be so you get the alcohol group formed there. And the acid group form there. However, because we're hydrolyzing it with sodium hydroxide, the sodium hydroxide will react with the two carboxylic acids produced. Uh, to, so we've got carboxylic acid group here, carboxylic acid group here. So we end up with the sodium salt of that and the sodium salt of this carboxylic acid plus two moles of H2O. So in fact, the aspirin reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide. So we've added an excess of sodium hydroxide. We know exactly how much sodium hydroxide we started off with. It was a one mole per litre solution and we added 25 cubic centimetres. So what we have to do now is find out how much sodium hydroxide is left over. We'll find that out by doing a titration with sulfuric acid. So once we know how much sulfuric acid is left over, we know how much we started with. By difference, we work out how much sodium hydroxide reacted with the aspirin. So we know how many moles of sodium hydroxide reacted. The number of moles of aspirin will be half that amount, and we can work out the mass of the aspirin, and hence the percentage purity of the aspirin tablets. Okay. Right, we've let the reaction mixture cool down. Okay, the reason why we let it cool down, of course, is that aqueous solutions expand when they're hot. So the standard flask uh, relies on the aqueous solution being at around about 20 degrees centigrade. So that's why we let it cool down.
So we'll transfer this to the 250 cubic centimetre cast standard flask. We'll wash the side of the beakers. Transfer the washings. And we'll do that a second time. Get it near to the mark. And then the last few drops I will add using a dropping funnel. Okay, that's spot on. So I shall get a stopper and give it a mix so we get it uniformly mixed up. Okay, right. So I've washed out my 25ml pipette with some of the aspirin solution. And now I'm transferring 25 mils to the conical flask. Now this solution should be alkaline because it contains some of the unreacted, the excess sodium hydroxide. So we add two or three drops of phenolphthalein indicator. And we get the pink colour we get in alkaline solutions. So I'm now going to do a rough titration with sulfuric acid that I've got in the burette and find out roughly how much sulfuric acid is required. So, just lower this a wee bit. So my initial reading is exactly 1.0 cubic centimetres. This is just my rough titration, so just do it quite roughly. And our end point is, of course, where it goes colourless. So obviously we've got a shot a wee bit there, I've been the rough titration, so that's 15, it's actually exactly 15. So the total volume of sulfuric acid used was 14.0 cubic centimetres. I now repeat that two, three, four times till I get concordant results uh, doing accurate titrations. So that's two readings within 0.1 cubic centimetre of each other. My first two accurate titrations both gave me a volume of 13.3. So that will be the volume of sulfuric acid that I'll use in the calculation to determine the mass of aspirin in one tablet. So, first thing I have to do is work out the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that we started with. So let's call this the initial. So we used sodium hydroxide of a concentration of one mole per litre and we used 25 mils of it. So that means we used 0 0.025 moles of sodium hydroxide. Then we have to work out how many moles of sodium hydroxide were left over at the end. So to do that, we use the results from our titration. So the number of moles of sulfuric acid 
in the titration where the concentration of the sulfuric acid was 0 0.05 moles per litre. We used 13.3, so the volume is 0 0.0133. So the number of moles of sulfuric acid was 6.65 times 10 to minus 4 moles. If we look at the balanced equation for the reaction between sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid, we see that one mole of sulfuric acid reacts with two moles of sodium hydroxide. So the number of moles of sodium hydroxide will be the number of moles of sulfuric acid, 6.65 times 10 to minus 4 times 2, which comes out at 1.33 times 10 to negative 3 moles. Now that is the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in the 25 moles we took out of the standard flask. So the total number of moles of sodium hydroxide in the entire sample, all 250 moles, is 10 times that, or 0 0.0133 moles. That's in the 250 cubic centimetres, which was the whole sample. So we started with 0 0.025 moles. We had 0 0.0133 left over. So the number of moles of sodium hydroxide reacted with the number of moles we started with, 0 0.025, take away the number of moles that we were left with which equals 0.0117 moles. Okay. So again, if we look back at our balanced equations, we know how many moles of sodium hydroxide reacted, and we see that two moles of that will react to one mole of aspirin, so the number of moles of aspirin will be half the number of moles of the sodium hydroxide. So the number of moles of aspirin is 0 0.0117 divided by 2 which equals 5.85 times 10 to negative 3 moles. We want to know the mass of aspirin. So the mass of the aspirin is 5.85 times 10 to minus 3 multiplied by the gram formula mass of aspirin which is 180 which comes out at 1.053 grams. Now if you remember we used two tablets so that was the number of grams of aspirin in two tablets which reminds me up here, I'd put the mass of aspirin, but in fact, what we were supposed to put up here was the number of aspirin tablets, so maybe I should just have put in brackets two tablets. So, the mass of aspirin in one tablet is just that number divided by two, which is 0 0.5265 grams, or 527 milligrams. Okay, finally it says compare your results with the manufacturer's specification. Well, according to the manufacturer, the, the number of moles, I'm sorry, the mass of aspirin in one tablet was in fact only 300 milligrams. So, we had a far higher number than, or at least I had a far higher number than we should have got. So, what possible explanations are there from, for this? Well, unfortunately because we didn't have any pure aspirin, we weren't able to run a control experiment. So, we didn't have a control experiment to validate our method. It could be that our sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid concentrations aren't quite right. 
and errors in them would have showed up the control didn't work out so I suspect that the one mole per litre sodium hydroxide or the 0 0.05 mole per litre sulfuric acid is perhaps not quite spot on another possible reason of course is that the sodium hydroxide was reacting with other things in the tablet other than aspirin because if only 300 milligrams of the tablet is aspirin you know you've got about another 300 milligrams of other materials and some of them may have reacted with the sodium hydroxide so not all the sodium hydroxide reacting uh, necessarily reacted with aspirin so if you just should keep, take a couple of notes down here of possible explanations to account for the difference if there is a big difference in your results between your calculated value and the final value and the manufacturer's value